Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Another wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Man, something about us doesn't sound like we have the proper excitement about another wonderful day that the Lord has made. We weren't guaranteed to be here today, so we need to understand that God has been so merciful and so loving to each and every one of us that we ought to be able to worship Him and praise His holy name. So I'm going to start off again and I'm going to say another wonderful day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the 11th Street Baptist Church and I'm Pastor Andrew Hill and we're about to get into our service. Um, on last Sunday, we had a young man to uh, go ahead and join church. And if he comes into the, the doors today, I want to make sure that we interrupt service and go ahead and fellowship with that young man. Because that was one thing that we missed on last uh, Sunday when uh, church ended. We began to disperse before we ever even got a chance to talk to the, the young man. And I... I uh, I am praying that he will, will show up again today so that we can go ahead and love on him the way we need to love on him. Do y'all agree with me? Amen. All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and start our service off, and, and we're going to keep praying and keep on asking the Lord to use us in his service even deeper and deeper than we've already been used. We always start our service off with a scripture reading and our scripture reading today is coming from Romans the 8th chapter beginning at the 28th verse and I'm going to read all the way down to verse 39 Romans the 8th chapter beginning at the 28th verse all the way down to the 39th verse and I'm asking that you stand to your feet and give reverence to the word of God And those who do have their Bibles and would like to read along with me, would you go ahead and read along with me? We can read it in unison, or you can sit there and ponder over what the Word of God is saying to us today. Romans the 8th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse, all the way down to the 39th verse. And it reads as follows. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for a no, he also did predestinate to be confirmed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. May God have supernatural blessing to the reading and hearing of his eternal word. We've got to understand that we need to take that word and let it marinate in our lives. We need to be able to use the word of God to go ahead and conquer all the demons that are coming against us. Do you know that we have to be more than conquerors? We can't just be conquerors. We have to be more than conquerors through Christ who saved us. Do you understand that there was power that came into us at our point of salvation? Do you realize that once he engifts the spirit in 
given to us, we are able to go ahead and defeat the works of the enemy. That's what I'm talking about with that scripture. That particular scripture came to mind right when I was turning through the pages and it came right up on it. So I know God wanted us to hear that scripture and go ahead and immerse ourselves with it so that we can conquer these things that are coming against us. This is the week of Thanksgiving, but we don't seem to have the proper Thanksgiving in our hearts. We need to thank the Lord for how good he has been to us. So we're going to go ahead and go into prayer. And whatever you want to do, go ahead and come forward if you feel like doing it. If you feel like going ahead and saying a word of prayer, say a word of prayer and come forward and, and be able to do it. If you feel like just reading a scripture, if you feel like just going ahead and doing a hymn, we're here to go ahead and worship and praise the Lord. Do you realize that on, a, on not only this occasion, which we call Thanksgiving, that we just had all of the turkey, all of the good things that we had, all of the food, all of that ambrosia, that fruit ambrosia, all of that stuff pales in comparison to the goodness of God. Do you understand how good he's been to us? We ought to be able to just go ahead and yell and shout to, on every mountain and every valley that we're in. We ought to be able to shout and we ought to be able to be spotted by someone shouting and they ought to be able to begin to shout too as well because they see a fire inside of us and because we have that fire inside of us, they can have that same fire inside of them too. Yes, right. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in prayer. And you can pray along with me. You can do whatever it is that the Lord puts on your heart to do at this particular point in time. So let's go ahead and just bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for another wonderful opportunity for us to come into your home, Lord. We know that this place that we call a church is not really the church. The church is inside of each and every one of us, Lord. And we thank you for giving us the church inside of us, Lord. Because with the church comes a special relationship that one another, each and every one of us, share among each other. Lord, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to live better. We give us we thank you for giving us the opportunity to live better. We give we thank you for giving us the opportunity to be strengthened in your power and in your might, Lord. We know that there is nothing that we can do in and of ourselves, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for giving us all of the power, Lord. We realize that none of the glory even belongs to any of us, Lord. But you allowed us to be glorified, Lord, because you did predestinate that we would be here today, Lord. You predestinated that we would be in your service, Lord. We want to be used better in your service, Lord. We want to be used more powerfully in your service. Lord, we want to do your will, Lord, and we know that we can't do all of the things that you are requiring of us to do if we don't have you, Lord. So we're asking for an extra special dosage of your Holy Spirit in this place, and not only in this place, Lord, but in every church that is open in your name, Lord. Please give us the strength and the power to defeat the works of the enemy, Lord. Give us the strength and the power to drag our kids back into church, Lord. Give us the strength and the power to go ahead and drag our family members back into church, Lord. Go ahead and give us the strength and the power to go out in those highways and byways and compel men to come into the Lord, Lord. It's not all about us just coming into a building, Lord, but everywhere that we go, Lord, help us to realize that the church is going with us, Lord. We thank you for letting us be a part of your church, Lord. We thank you for letting us be a part of your kingdom. Oh, we desire you more in our lives, Lord, and we thank you for never turning your back on us, Lord. Every time we've ever needed you in our lives, you come through, Lord, so we just say thank you for how you come through in our lives, Lord. We thank you for the healings that you put down in our lives. Lord, we thank you for increasing our knowledge each and every day, Lord. We thank you for giving us your spirit to go ahead and dwell inside of us, Lord. We thank you for empowering us to go out and defeat the works of the enemy. We thank you for every time you fed the homeless, the hungry, Lord. We thank you for every time that you've been giving shelter to the homeless, Lord. We thank you for every time that you have gone ahead and just helped every person that may have some kind of problem with their mind, Lord. We know that you're more powerful than anything. You're a heart fixer, Lord. You're amazing, Lord, in our lives, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've ever done for us, Lord. But we realize that even if you never do another thing for us, you're still God in our lives. Lord, we love you.
love you, Lord. We love you more than we can ever say, Lord. And we're trying our very best to go ahead and give all of the honor and all of the glory to only you, Lord. Please help us to have an awesome praise, Lord. Not only in this place, but every place that the Christian, the believers are gathered together, Lord. Please help them to have a powerful worship on this day. Lord, we want to thank you for just how good you've been to us, Lord. We know that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We thank you, Lord, with all of our hearts, Lord. Continue to strengthen our church, Lord, and empower our church to go ahead beyond these walls so that we can go out in the highways and byways and compel me to come unto you, Lord. It's all about your mission, Lord. We want to do your mission, Lord. If you see anything in us that's not like you, Lord, please remove it as far as the east as from the west, Lord. Please remove the sin, Lord. Please remove the discouragement, Lord. Please, please remove the problem-mindedness, Lord. Please remove the high-mindedness, Lord. Please remove the pride, Lord. Please remove all of those things that are not like you, Lord. Please replace them with love, Lord. Please replace them with joy, Lord. Please replace them with understanding, Lord. Please replace them with knowledge, Lord. Please replace them with everything that we need, Lord. We want to be able to defeat the works of the enemy, and we can't do it all by ourselves, Lord. So we thank you that you said in your word that you never leave us and you never forsake us, Lord. We have so much to be thankful for that we can't thank you enough. Lord, even if we had a thousand tongues, we realize we couldn't thank you enough for how good you've been to us. Lord, but we still say we thank you, Lord. Not only on Thanksgiving, Lord, but we thank you every day of our life, Lord. We thank you every hour of our every day, Lord. We thank you every second of every hour, Lord. Oh, we remember all of the things that, that we're supposed to be doing out here. And we know we failed in comparison to everything that you wanted us to be, Lord. But we thank you that you are merciful enough to allow us to even see another day. We thank you, Lord. We still need you to empower us, Lord. We still need to do a better job in your service, Lord. So we're asking that you just touch our hearts and touch our minds and help us to do all of the things that are acceptable in your sight. All these blessings we ask today, we ask in the name of our darling Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's praying time. If anybody would like to pray or or do whatever, you know, uh, let's don't only say it's praying time. Let's say it's praising time because it's time for us to praise him. I mean, if, if anything, you can at least praise him for the wonderful things that he's done, you know. But it really should be even more than just our praise that goes forth in these types of sessions. It should be a worship that goes forward. Yes, yes. Yes. And do you realize why worship is so much more powerful than anything? It's because worship comes not because of something you've been given or something that's been done. But we're worshiping him because of who he is. And that's, that's what it's all about in our lives. We need to worship him because of who he is. We need to go ahead and just lift our voices. We need to sing. We need to we need to have a Holy Ghost good time. That's what we need to do. You know, we wonder time and time again why people will come in and out. And it's like revolving doors around here. But sometimes when people come in and it's like those revolving doors, the reason that type of situation happens in in, in churches is because sometimes people come in and they can see the fakeness <laughs> that's in the place. Do you do you understand what I'm trying to say? Is that whatever we do, we need to do it with our whole hearts. We need to do it with our whole minds. We need to be totally sold out for it. That's the only reason. I mean, people that are, are, are out there on the streets and the highways and byways, they are gifted with this kind of thing where they can see through fakeness. That's one thing that I've learned, that those people that, that are, 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 have really been uh, uh, introduced to street life or, or into, uh, introduced to uh, uh, a problematic life, they are able to look at situations and they 
are able to tell what is exactly going on in those situations. I don't know what, what it is that uh, that they have, but they can see the fakeness. They can see when we're not having our whole hearts in there. You know, when we're worried about our clothes and how good they look, you know, and when we're worried about how we're uh, coming before them and appearing before, before them, then they can see, oh man, I, all that dude is worried about is his suit. Well, I don't care if I sweat out my suit. I don't care. It's important enough for me to not worry about. I'm glad I don't wear makeup. <laughs> if I wear makeup, it'd be messed up, you know. And I'm, I mean, I'm serious. I would feel a little embarrassed, you know, after I come out of it. But I, but during, <laughs> I wouldn't even be worried about it. Probably when I got back home and I looked in the mirror, probably would have a little problem then, you know. But I'm telling you, it takes that and even more. There are people that are going to tell you in life that that uh, you can put your praise and worship in a box, but you cannot put it in a box. Praise and worship is bigger than a box. And somehow we have to get, when you have a certain amount of gratefulness in your heart, then that's exactly what will come out in praise and worship. Does anybody like to pray or anything?
another blessed guest of song, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone like to pray? Anyone else? If there's no one else, then you're now in the hands of the choir. Let's go ahead and do some praise and worship the Lord in this place.
try to be good. I kept telling myself I could be good. I would try to be good. We got one of my friends that came into church and he, 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 he know better. He know better than to do me like that. He come into church. Uh, and I was just wondering if he would uh, sing a song of his choice. Come uh, on, All right, come on, let's give him a hand, let's encourage him. This is my buddy Zach. Getting better, it's already getting 
Tunisia. Usually it would be better than this. Oh. I've just been going through a lot. A lot. But I know it's going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. He did it for me. He did it for me.
I've seen it over and over again in the churches when I grew up. And uh, I always said that I wouldn't be like that. But now here I am, you know, at a point in my life where I shouldn't, I should be already in place and doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. But time and time again, I find myself being discouraged too. And not answering the call like God has told me to do. This was supposed to be a day of Thanksgiving, and it still is. I mean, not because it's this close to that holiday that we call Thanksgiving, but because we ought to have thankfulness in our heart for every day that we're given. I mean, when we wake up, that should be Thanksgiving Day. It shouldn't just be on a certain day in November, but any day in November, any day in December, any day in January. You can list all the months out. It could be any day. Any day that he's allowed us to see the breath of life one more time, it should be a Thanksgiving day to each and every one of us. But just the same, we come through and we go through the motions. Just like we've started off today, we're just going through the motions because we think that this is what we're supposed to be doing, but it's not. I'm about to get myself together because I've got to give the word of God and, and God has a word for us on today that deals with exactly what, what's on my heart. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to uh, Psalm 100. Psalm 100. If you get to that point in your Bible, would you please stand to your feet? singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If I had to use a script, a uh, 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 text for today, or a title for this, I would just simply say, "Be grateful." Amen. Be grateful. I love looking at the song. That book is all about praise. Really, actually, the name of the book of song is to healing. And that particular title is given to that book because it's a book about praise. Amen. When we think about praising God, we think about just how good he has been to us, and that compels us to go ahead and respond and reciprocate to him how thankful we are that he has been so good to us. But not only because he has been so good to us should we be thankful to him, but we should already be thankful to him for just who he is. Amen. This book of Psalm 
And not only this book, but this book particularly is prescribed to David being the writer of this particular song. It's a small song, but most of us may not realize exactly what that song is saying, even though it's in the most simplistic of terms when it begins to talk about praise. Actually, the word praise that is used in this particular song is really another word for thanksgiving. Did y'all know that? Being that it's another word for thanksgiving, it really prescribes that we are thankful to God. And it's usually associated with a day of thanksgiving, this particular song. And it's also usually prescribed for a day in which a thank offering was given, in which you were giving it to God because you were so grateful for the deliverance that he had placed in our, our lives. So most of us ought to understand when we read a particular uh, psalm such as this where it begins to sing about God's goodness and it begins to tell us exactly about how good he's been in our lives that we ought to be able to bow down and we ought to be grateful for just how good he's been to us. God didn't have to do anything that he has done for us but because of his love and his mercy and his care and his provision that he's given to us he began to protect us when we're going through times such as this. A little bit earlier, we heard a young man begin to sing a song and he got choked up right in the middle of the song that he began to sing because he began to think about the words of that particular song. I could feel exactly what was going on in his mind. He began to think about all of the turmoil the trouble that he was going through in his life, but he began to see that God did it. Yes, he did it. So God did every change that was in his life that was necessary for him to still be walking and talking and living among the living today. Some of us take for granted that we are alive today, but I stop by here to tell you that you are alive and well today only because of the goodness of God. So we ought to be grateful for at least that. But so many times in our lives, we begin to take God's goodness for granted. There are times in our lives that we put him on the back burner because there are so many things that are happening in our lives at a particular point in time. We go through so much trouble and strife during these days that we get our mind fixated on the trouble and the strife that is going on in our lives. Instead of us going ahead and turning and looking at the, the struggle, the trouble that we're going through, and being able to have an expectation that God is going to show up because he showed up every time I've ever needed him in the past. I've come by here to tell somebody that even though you're going through trouble moments in your life right now, you've got to realize that God has control of the trouble. And as long as he's got control of the trouble, you don't have to worry. You don't have to complain. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to get caught up in it. All you got to do is worship him and praise his holy name for the goodness that he's about to explode into your life. There are so many people that begin to look at this particular scripture and not realize that David wrote it. But when you understand that David wrote it, you still begin to have trouble with the thought that David could have wrote something so beautiful talking about the Lord. You know, this was a prophetic word that God, that David was actually giving at this particular moment, moment in time. It was not only a prophetic word, but it was also a word that kind of helped him through his past that he had gone through. You see, David's life wasn't always a good life. He had some trouble along the way. If you open up your Bibles and you go into 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, you begin to hear about all of the troubles that David had to go through. There were times when David had to go ahead and be criticized or be looked over in life. Do you, have you ever been looked over in life? Do you understand what that feels like? David was looked over. When, you remember when the man of God came to David and he began to talk to David. I mean, he began to talk to Jesse, which was David's father, and he began to ask him about his sons. He said, you got a son here that I've come by here to anoint as king. But uh, Jesse didn't look automatically and say, oh, let me go get David out of the field and bring him here so that you can go ahead and anoint him to be king. But uh, uh, Jesse went ahead and looked, and he said, I'm going to go get my oldest son, because he looks like he would be a king, so he brought him before him. You know, he did this seven times until he got all the way down, and Samuel had to go ahead and go to him and say, hey, don't you have another son? Is there another one? Because God said it was a 
leader of those sons that was right here. But he looked at out and he said, I do have one son, but he's out there in the fields and he's tending to the sheep right now. So he went and got young David and brought him there before Samuel. So David had been overlooked for his other brothers when it was supposed to be him. Do you understand how harsh that is and how that can feel in your life? Oh, that's not enough of a story for you to understand that David went through some things, but there was another time that David went out to where the people were battling and they were getting ready to battle the, battle the Philistines. And when they walked in front of the Philistines, the only thing that they could see was this terrible giant that stood tall before all of them. And everybody was scared. Everybody was scared except for David. Do you remember how David said, hey, how are we letting this Philistine challenge us? How are we letting this Philistine come against us? How, how are we letting all of these things happen to us because of this giant Philistine? And he said, I will make it to him the same thing that I did to the lion and the bear when I was out there tending the sheep because David believed that God was with him and as long as he knew that God was with him he was willing to do anything but one of his brothers looked at him and said you need to go back home you are not you're not meant to be here he thought David was just full of talk when David was full of fire oh if that's not enough for you to understand how bad it is when even your family members look on look down on you and they begin to talk about you and they begin to criticize you they begin to say you ain't gonna never amount to nothing when you know that God is with you and you can be anything that God says you can be you got to understand that David went through even more trouble there was a time when his leader began to chase him all around trying to kill him, trying to attack him because he was jealous of all of the things that David began to do in his life. Do you remember that time when Saul began to try to attack David? But God just hid David so that Saul could not get to him, so that he could spare his life. Do you remember the times when we would go even past that, when David and his men walked out of the city that they were in and the Amalekites came in as soon as they left out and began to pillage and destroy that city took all the wives and burnt the city down. Do you remember that time? David went through even more trouble. When we go into 2 Samuel, you begin to understand that David had to deal with the grief of Jonathan, his friend, which was Saul's son being killed. Jonathan and Saul were killed in the same battle and David still grieved for them because he was hurting inside his heart even though Saul began to attack him and chased him around out of jealousy. Still, David was not at the end of troubles in his life. Do you realize that even when you get past that, when you get around the 11th chapter, you begin to see David standing on top of a rooftop. And he, when all of his men were out the battle, David began to look over the rooftop and he saw a pretty woman down there bathed and naked. And he said, I want to possess her. So because he wanted to possess her, he went ahead and sent for her and even did the unspeakable things that, that, that caused him to go ahead and have an adulterous relationship with her. Yeah. And to that adulterous relationship, he was born a child. Yeah. And God took the child. Yes. yes, David went through some hurt. He went through some pain. That wasn't even the end of the pain and the hurt that he had. Because you look on a little bit further, when you go around the 13th chapter, you realize that one of David's sons raped David's daughter, Tamar. Yeah. Yeah. And the son was killed for raping her by David's other son, Absalom. And we're not through with Absalom yet because Absalom went on to even attack his father and want to take his kingdom from him. My Lord. David deal with all kinds of stresses that we can't even imagine in our lives that he had to deal with. But David was able to get through those stresses because of the provision that God had for him in his life. You've got to realize that even though he was looked over seven times by the, uh, the uh, father that he had and also by the man of God sitting there waiting to find the exact person, David was still anointed as king because of God's provision. You've got to realize that even though all of his family had been stolen by the Amalekites. He went ahead and consulted of the Lord. And when he consulted of the Lord, you know exactly what happened? He received all. He recovered everything that had been stolen from him by the enemy. There is somebody that I'm speaking to right now. You got to understand that everything that has been meant for bad in your life is only turning around for the good and only because God meant it to turn around for the good. And because God meant it to turn around for the good, we ought to 
be grateful. Amen. But so many times we look around, you know what the problem is with most of us, the, the, the thing that causes us not to be as grateful as we need to be out here in the world these days, one thing that happens is that once we become saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, you know how we get, we get so holier, holier than now that we think that nothing ever wrong is going to happen in our lives. So as soon as a bad thing begins to hit our lives, we begin to get so discouraged that we think that God is not with us. So we don't begin to praise him for the deliverance that he's already worked in our lives because we can't see the deliverance at that point because we're all out of the circle. We're all out of the ark of safety and we don't even know that we're out of the ark of safety. We've got to understand that God is a just God. He's a righteous God. He loves us. And you know why he loves us? It talked about it in this crowd, uh, in this scripture that we were reading right here. It began to talk about how God loved us because we are his people. Did you realize that you ought to be all, your chest ought to be all puffed out just to, at the thought that you are God's people? Yes. But nevertheless, most of us will sit there and we'll go through that stress and that strife that we have turn at us day in and day out. You know, some of y'all are looking at me like, oh man, we're not going through no problems, but man, just look around. <laughs> Man, we see evidence of all of the problems and the struggles that we're going through each and every day. Oh, man, we got more people dying than ever before. I mean, sometimes, man, I don't have enough black suits to even wear to the number of funerals that are happening around us nowadays. Sometimes I look at the news and I begin to see all of the rioting and fighting and how all of the misuse and all of the hatred that is flowing through the world. It's flowing at such an unprecedented rate right now that we don't even know where we are uh, 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 down or up. You know? we, we look at these situations that we're going through and then we... We, we just don't have any answer for it. I mean, even when you turn on the news and you see all of these pandemic situations, and it's not only the pandemic situations that are getting you right now, but there are so many new mutations, variations. And I mean, every time I turn on the news, there's something new about how we should, should feel down and out or how we should be discouraged. But I'm not discouraged in life because I know that God has a plan for me. And as long as God has a plan for me, I am so grateful that that he'll use me in that plan. Uh, uh, we ought to be grateful, yeah. even in the good times. We ought to be grateful, even in the bad times. We ought to be grateful every day of our lives. We ought to be grateful in the noonday. We ought to be grateful late at night. We ought to just wake up with gratefulness on our heart. And if you have gratefulness on your heart, you're going to feel compassion towards someone else. Yeah. That's where we miss our gratefulness right there, is how we care for other people. When we see somebody else going through, all we can do is think about the problems that we're going through in our lives. Oh, I don't have $20 to get this person because I got to use that $20 to go get my raffle tickets. Oh, <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm talking to myself or something, you know, because I, I, I didn't mean to go there. I didn't mean to go there because I'm going to mess up somebody's raffle tickets this evening. But the thing that you've got to understand is that We've got to have, because we were given so much, because God loves us so much and he cares for us, he looks at us and we are precious in his sight. Have you ever heard that? We used to sing a song when I was little and we would, we would talk about that. He, he's precious in our sight. We are precious in his sight. We are precious in his sight. Oh man, we're, we are. We are precious in his sight. He looks at us and he treats us. I mean, last uh, last Sunday we were, we were talking about a scripture and we started talking about how we were precious in his sight, really. We were, we, we were precious. He looks at us as, as his workmanship. <laughs> we're his workmanship. We're his uh, masterpiece that he has put out here. But he, we're not his masterpiece so we can get all puffed up about it. No, we're his masterpiece because he created us for good works. For us to be able to do those good works, we've got to go ahead and understand that he created us for those good works. I mean, the good works don't come first and then we are good enough to be able to be his people, but we become his people, we become his children, and then the good works follow because we're his children. It's just funny how people don't understand how that, that correlates. They don't understand that, how that uh, relates, but maybe if I put it in layman terms. 
our children resemble us. In these scriptures, it was talking about God is good. If we resemble God as his children, we'll be good. If we resemble God as his children, we will have mercy. <laughs> now this one, this is really going to get you. If we resemble God <laughs> like his children, we'll have everlasting truth. <laughs> man, there are so many lying people in this world, man. <laughs> there are so many people that lie on a daily basis. They would rather, uh, me and my mama used to say this all the time. She said, they would rather uh, stand on the, on the roof on the rain and lie to you than to come inside where it's dry <laughs> and tell the truth. That just came. That just came to my mind. I, I know what she meant now, you know, because I was a lying to your little boy. <laughs> I was lying, man. I was doing some lying, boy. Woo, man. I'm like, it wasn't me. <laughs> I wasn't over there. <laughs> I've been right here all day. You know, it's a shoe. No, I ain't gonna step on the sidewalk. <laughs> you know, man. I I gave it to him. And you know, because I gave it to him, God gave it right back to me. I got kids just like I was. My mama put that curse on me. She said, one day I hope you have a little boy just like you. Man, I got a few of them. <laughs> and they all do some things that I say, yeah, I did. I did. But getting back to what I was saying is that we ought to be grateful. I'm even grateful for those kids like that, you know. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for the fact that they are here and they are alive and well. You know, some of them are not saved, you know. Some of them are not saved. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that my kids are, are not uh, are just like, man, you know, the, the worst thing you can find is a preacher's kid sometimes, you know, because, boy, they done heard the Bible, they done heard somebody talking to them and messing with them all their life, and they rebelling against it because the enemy is right there, because the enemy is, if the enemy can't get into the preacher, he's going to get to the preacher's kids. That's what, it, that's what the enemy does out here in this world. But it ain't it good to know that God is so righteous. He's so merciful. He's so loving that he goes ahead and he takes our kids and he covers them. Even if they're out of the office of safety because he knows what the preacher is going through. He knows what the regular person is going through on the street. He knows what the people that are out there in the highways and byways are going through. So he keeps on reaching out a lifeline to them. He keeps on throwing it out to them. And we ought to be grateful. There are so many people that ought to be grateful. They have lived these things. They have gone through this madness. They have gone through the struggle. They have seen all kinds of trouble come their way. They've seen problematic times still happening in their life right now. And they know that it's only by the grace of God that they are still alive today. But some of them will not open their mouth. They won't even thank God for the simple things that he does. Like thanking him for waking them up in the morning. Thanking him for starting them on their way. Thanking him for giving them their right mind. Calling them in their right mind. That's what the old folks used to tell me in the church. I didn't understand it then, but I got to be thankful for the simple things that God has already done for me. Because he's done so much more marvelous things. So much more miraculous things. Oh, I don't know where, where I can find the praises in the house today. I don't know about those that understand how to praise his name. How to be grateful for the goodness that he's given to them. But I'm looking. I'm just going every day of my life. I'm just searching around for people to praise him and worship him the same way I want to praise and worship him. I stop worrying about these nice suits. Brother Eric brought this suit for me. He brought it down from California. I know you don't want me to put him on the spot like that, but I'm going to sweat out your suit that you gave me because I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he did it every wrong. Oh man, I wish I could sing if I had a voice to sing. My God, I tell you to get on there and tickle those ivories because there are so many songs in my heart because of God's goodness. How grateful I am to him. Oh Lord, if you want me to pull a song, oh man, remember this song right here. Remember this one right here, Michael. Oh man, you got to go with me, man, on this one, man. He said, I've been through a lot. <laughs> I had to press my way through, but I'm going with Jesus. 
Jesus all the way. That's how grateful I am. Oh, I'm so grateful that is. Well, look at this one. Praise is what I do. When I, even when I'm going through, I lift my hand and praise. Praise is who I am. I'll praise him while I can. Oh, you got to understand. You got to remember these songs. You got to carry them in your heart. You got to go ahead and rip them out sometimes and sing them. Oh, man, you ought to count your many blessings and see what the Lord has done for you. God has been so good to each and every one of us that we all have a song in our heart. We all have some kind of praise. We all have some kind of worship. Where we don't care what people are thinking about us. We don't care how, how we sweat out our clothes. We don't care how we mess up our hair. We don't care how we run around the church, how we go ahead and do it. But we don't only need to do it just because we're just trying to say thank you. But it takes more than us just saying thank you to the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? It takes more than us just giving it some lip service. we got to really have it in our heart. One of the most important things that you have to have in order for you to be able to praise is you have to have adoration. Do you know what adoration is? Yes. <laughs> adoration ain't nothing but saying you have to have love in your heart. Yeah. If you have love in your heart for God, right. you would praise Him. Yes. Yes. Do y'all believe that? Yes. And the reason I say that is because we can't praise what we don't adore. We cannot praise what we do not adore. If we adore the Lord, like we say we do, oh, well, I'm not talking about the stuff that you do because I got the camera running right now. I'm not talking about the stuff that you do because you're wearing your favorite hat, your favorite church hat, and you want, you don't want people to see your church hat. I'm talking about the thing that you do even when you're by yourself. When you get in your prayer closet and you begin to pray to the Lord, you begin to ask Him for things, and you begin to also tell Him how great He is, oh, how merciful He is, how loving He is. You begin to go ahead and just tell Him from the depths of your heart because you believe it and you understand that I have an expectation that he's going to show up in my life today because he showed up every day. He showed up on a Monday in my life. He showed up on a Tuesday in my life. I looked at him on a Wednesday in my life. I looked at him on a Thursday in my life. I'm rounding around to Friday in my life. And then when I get to Saturday, I've already had five days before me that I've already praised the Lord. So I get to Sunday. It's no impossible thing for me to go ahead and like I should. I ought to be able to dance until my heel come off my shoe. I ought to be able to sing until I don't have a voice anymore. I ought to be able to preach until I don't have a voice anymore. I ought to be able to tell somebody on the highways and byways. If I love him, I'll go ahead and tell someone. If I love him, I'll go ahead and encourage someone. If I love him, I'll go ahead and love somebody else. I'll love him. Oh man, am I the only person that thinks it's a strange thing for a man to love a man? I love a man and his name is Jesus. That's the man I love. That's the man I love. Now ain't nothing perverted about that. Ain't nothing perverted about the love that I have for my Lord. The Bible tells us that he first loved us. And when we understand that, how can we not reciprocate that same love? Praise and worship our thanksgiving to the Lord not only comes from us just saying thank you, but it comes on how we perform the service. One of the important things that is said in that scripture was that uh, that you should enter into his gates with joy and gladness. That really shows you that when you enter in, when you come in before him, and when it's talking about entering into the gate, it's not just talking about in the temple. It's talking about entering before the presence of God. And if you realize that it's talking about presence of God, then you realize that he is with you always. So every day you ought to have this joy and gladness about you. You ought to have this joy and gladness that compels you to go ahead and tell somebody about him. Uh, or, or, or just tell the atmosphere about it. I mean, you could be in your prayer closet at night and just begin to tell him. If you miss the praise and worship service at, at your particular church, don't stop there. Go ahead and have your praise and worship. You don't just have to have it there. Yes. 
Do you realize that we owe him the praise, we owe him the thanks each and every day of our life? Yes. And once you get that into to, to your, <laughs> let me use another one of my mamas. <laughs> Once you get that into your thick skull, <laughs> how many of you parents are saying that to your kid? Uh, once you get that into your thick skull, that God loves you, He cares for you, He never stopped caring for you. No matter what the enemy is telling you today, Zach, no matter what the enemy is telling you today, God loves you. He loves you for being you. You being you. God will fix the rest. God will fix it. I really want you to understand that. God will fix it. Whatever it is, you know. You don't have to tell me about it. You don't have to tell your folks about it. Tell God. You got to let him know, though. You got to let him know that you want the help. You got to let, let him know. I never like to end a sermon without telling someone just in case there's somebody here who doesn't know that the Lord really did miraculous things for us in our lives. Not only the things that he's doing on a daily basis, but over 2,000 years ago he did uh, a truly miraculous thing for each and every one of us. And he uh, allowed us to uh, right to the tree of life. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then all you have to do is listen to a brief story that I'll tell you about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, how he came down and he walked among each and every one of us and he did all kinds of miraculous things. He healed the, the lame, the sick, Sin sick, he, he forgave sins. He, he did all kinds of miraculous things as he walked among the people and he traveled among them. And when I talk about being grateful, all I have to do is think about how he lived his life and what the mission was for his, his life here on earth. And that mission was to give each and every one of us a right to the tree of life. And the way he did that was by giving up his own life as a sacrifice for each and every one of our sins. Now, that means every sin that you you can ever imagine that you've done, he died on the cross for those sins. It doesn't give you the right to go out there and live like the devil, though. It doesn't. He just really died for your sins so that you would appear as righteous in front of his father. Because you have to understand that his father has to judge sin. So he became the covering for us yeah. to help us appear by giving his blood. Now, people ask me all the time, man, how in the world can you take red blood and that wash you white as snow? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I know that it was his blood that purified us. It was his blood that served as a remission of our sins. Every sin that we've ever done, when he took his death on that cross, he not only took his death on the cross, but he struggled all the way down through there just for you and me. Yeah. How is it that we can't be grateful for a God that would send his only begotten yeah. son down to die for our sins? Wow. He died on he died excruciating death. Yes. I'm talking about yeah. nails in the hands, a nail through both of his feet mm -hmm. as he it said that in this uh, in one scripture I was reading uh, in, in our Sunday school lesson, it said he was hanging from a tree. Well, basically he was. Because what do you think they fashioned the cross out of? It was wood. It's part of a tree. And he hung there. And he bled and he died. And when he bled and died, he never said a moment of word. He took it. He took all the criticism, even seeing his own people turn their backs on him. He took it all. We ought to be grateful. But we ought to be even more grateful that that's not how the story ended. When he gave up his life on that cross, that was just the beginning. Because when he gave his life up on that cross, 
he went ahead and he took his life up again because he had the power to do so. After three days and three nights after his body had been hidden in a bar or tomb, he rose again with all power in his hands. We ought to still be grateful that he's at the right hand of the Father even today, interceding on our behalf. I tell that story because I don't ever want there to be someone sitting in my midst that didn't hear that story. Because that's the gospel. That's the good news. The good news is that he rose again after all of that. And he took dominion over death and he took dominion over our sins. And for that reason, we can appear before God as righteous. That's a beautiful thing. I'm going to urge you once again to just be grateful. When you go through your normal things in life and you go through uh, uh, whatever you're going through right now. I don't know each individual struggles, but I do know that God is bigger than any struggles that we could ever go through. Yeah. And as long as we have God on our side, and as long as we trust and believe that he will go ahead and heal our sin sickness and heal any problem or issue that we have in our lives, then we know that we have the answer to all of our desires and all of our issues. God is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other because Jesus is the way. I'm going to leave you with uh, this song. You remember the song, Be Grateful? Man, I wish somebody here could sing that. You know, because that song says it all in a nutshell. Be grateful. That song, Be Grateful. I remember that song. I know one of y'all got a voice there. Boy, if I could just hear that, be grateful. <laughs> it starts off and it tells you God has not promised you sunshine. That's not how it's supposed to be. never promised us that it would be easy on this journey that we go through. He never promised us that we would only have sunshine. But it says a little rain mixed with all God's sunshine. A little pain helps us to appreciate the good times. Do you understand how it works? That God can't afford to show us only good because we would get so puffed up in our own minds and we would begin to think that we have the answers to everything and there won't be any reason for us to go out and do good things. There won't be any appreciation that we would have inside of ourselves. We've got to understand that we are called to be grateful. Be grateful. Because God loves us. Be grateful because God cares. Be grateful because God has the answer to our problems. Be grateful because he saw it fit for each and every one of us to see another day. Some of them didn't make it with us, but we're grateful that we're still alive and well to tell the story of how we got over. We're going to prepare to go ahead and dismiss because I I know I've said everything that the Lord had put on my heart. I may not have said it the way I had taken my notes and the way uh, he had actually given it to, to me, but I am satisfied that I have said something that would be of some usefulness to someone in the place. If only one, it's enough. The doors of the church are open. Yes. If there's someone who uh, hadn't had the opportunity to get to know the Lord and this is your day that you feel that you need to come forth and get in the ark of safety.
right, before we uh, go ahead and dismiss, uh, there have been some uh, uh, people that had questions about, like, when we do the offering and, and things like that. And this time, we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, come around and uh, uh, take up the offering uh, to make sure that we don't uh, miss anyone uh, and give them the opportunity to give. If I can have two deacons to come up forward and stand in the, in the center. And, uh, you're in the hands of the ushers at the back and they will... Uh, instruct everyone around situation that's going on in their lives that they need your deliverance they need your help from Lord please be that help for them just as you always have been Lord continue to guide them and use them Lord and please continue to use each and every one of us and empower us to go out in those highways and byways and compel men to come unto you we want to be used in your mission and we thank you for using us already in our lives Lord bless our young people encourage them Lord strengthen them up Lord and help us to be the right examples to them Lord so that they will know the right ways to go the right things to say the right things to do Lord so that they'll be encouraged Lord because they can look to the hills from where the help coming from Lord we know that that help coming from you Lord it's not the hills that the help comes from it comes from only you Lord and we understand that Lord so we're asking you to just take our thanks Lord take all of the glory for everything that you have done Lord because all of that glory and all of the honor belongs to only you Thank you for everything that you've done in our lives and continue to bless us and watch over each and every one of us is my prayer. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us until we meet again. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.